Hi, it's Locker back again, and I'm addressing another email today. This one's from Mary Kate, and it's a short email that Mary Kate writes, but it's quite deep. So basically, she's questioning about her existence here on this planet. A very deep question, um, very deep topic. But she's feeling that there's no hope of support here or she's questioning whether there is any hope of support here in this earth realm. And she's aware of um, the, the various spiritual teachers and she knows that it's one of her tasks to is getting to know herself, you know, the, the Delphic motto, know thyself. But she still feels that eternity is a long ass time, and that's in quotes, that's what Mary Kate wrote. Eternity is a long ass time to stand alone, though. She says, I know we could never possibly be really alone, but it sure feels like it. Okay. And this one tugged at me because it's exactly how I felt for, oh gosh, up until only a handful of years ago. Um, And I know a lot of spiritually focused people, they feel very tired. They feel very tired in their souls, in their hearts. And they would look forward to the dissolution and just being absorbed back into the essence of life, whatever that consists of. They basically want to annihilate. Is that the right word? Mm, it Disintegrate. I'm just, words are very nuanced. And I, I want to make sure I put a bit of effort into capturing that right essence that I'm trying to communicate Tired souls want to just let go. They want to just let go of any participation, anything that requires any kind of effort of thought or feeling or action. They just want homogenous non-being. Okay, that's the best way that I, I feel I can describe it at this time. Homogenous non-being, just going with the flow, no effort. And to carry that kind of feeling with you, particularly not so much, I won't say day in, day out, because there are episodes of, of higher energy when you are quite willing and able to participate um, at, at life. But then there are those mellow times. So maybe that's you know, a Piscean thing. Uh, we enjoy our mellow times where we get very introspective. Where it just feels like an effort to keep going. Okay, even on a spiritual level. That sense of exhaustion is very strong here on this planet particularly among spiritual people. And that whole ascension process, which I don't agree with, by the way, but I'll leave that for another um, recording. But that whole ascension process is about the dissolution of self. Okay, so this is the kind of energy that I'm picking up from Mary-Kate, and I want to respond with uh, a personal anecdote on on how and what changed for me so that now nowadays nowadays i just feel so so excited like it's the night before Christmas, you know, that kind of feeling. Do you remember that from when you were younger? But it's like, yes, there is work here to do. And oh, 
my whole outlook on this has 180 degrees shifted. And this is one of the, the very rare times that I'm articulating. So I'm going to be a bit clumsy here. So please forgive me. But it came about with a discovery of Dante, Dante Santori and, and the Caristos. And to discover that I was not limited to this human plane, that the borders of my reality went beyond the earth plane and out into the galaxies, that there were multiple levels of reality between our self-awareness and the prime creator. So here on Earth, here on Earth, one of the matrix frameworks is that here's you alive as a human and then above you is God. Okay, so the distance, the the conceptual dif- distance between your daily consciousness and the spiritual consciousness is actually quite short. Okay, we don't sort of really consider that there's other uh, stages of being or other other levels of reality that we can play at. Now, I've always been a UFO buff ever since, gosh, preteen. Okay, and that's the legacy of my father. He was very into into that. And mythology. I was always passionate about mythology. So gods, you know, the, uh, the Greek myths, the Sumerian myths, the Nordic myths, um, the magical realm. Okay, now I'm sure many of you love fantasy novels. You love science fiction novels. They kind of speak to a part of us that is buried but yearning, yearning for this expanded reality. And that's what Dante opened up for me, that it wasn't an idea, that it wasn't that it wasn't imaginary, but it was real, as in you can reach out and touch it. You can... (laughs) I'm laughing because our human senses are very limited and can be easily fooled. And so how can we ever prove that anything is real? Okay, but that's another conversation. But once my weary soul realized that this birdcage that I was trapped in, and this birdcage being this birdcage being the boundaries of human existence, okay, and you really can consider it as a matrix. I don't always consider the matrix as a bad thing. It has a function. But if the function is limiting, then it's a dysfunction. But Dante was able to open up that birdcage so that I could see the bigger, bigger matrix, I guess, you know, if you want to conceptualize Star Wars, um, the realm of Star Wars, all the worlds, all the galaxies that that encompasses, you know, as, as a much, much, much bigger matrix. Yep. Well, you can, that's probably what it is. But it's like, oh, I felt uncramped. I felt that my wings could finally stretch. And that I had a role to play in this much larger reality. And I've come to understand that many people who have this boredom with life, who have, you know, what's the point? Or... um, Okay, I need to be careful that, okay, we've got uh, the nihilistic perspective. These people who have nihilistic perspectives tend to be atheist. They don't perceive 
any kind of spiritual reality. But then you've got the bored spiritual people and they're the ones that I'm particularly addressing, the bored spiritual people, the ones who feel tired, exhausted. And you think, well, what's the point? And when I became aware that angels are real, aliens are real, and that there were races of gods, and we're talking hmm, possibly Anunnaki, and that there are multiple races, and that they are involved in this earth. They have been. Okay, that, that whole, not only is it an expanded reality, as in projecting forward and outward and upward, but also as in backward. Okay, the history of this planet, all those rabbit holes that are exhausting to dive into and they they end up in, in fragmented warrens. They become cohesive once you expand the horizons of your reality. So what I was able to clear away was the fragmentary aspect of, of reality that there were so many things that didn't make sense. But with this larger worldview, they now did make sense. When you realize that there are multiple players, it's a huge chess game. And we're not just talking like human entities like the Rothschilds and the Soruses, um, the Zuckerbergs, okay, that there are the puppet masters and then there are the puppet masters of the puppet masters. Okay, and what looks aggressive from one perspective is actually defensive from another perspective. So getting back to Dante's revelations. Now, if you don't know who Dante is, I'll leave a link to some of my articles on my website to give you a quick introduction. But one of the things that Dante really highlighted and made real for me is this concept of the spiritual war and that we are so tightly embroiled in it. And this is what brought me out of my boredom, my spiritual boredom, and actually activated a warrior aspect within me that I was here to play a part. And I, I basically, you're either I want to say pro-life, but that has all kinds of um, specific connotations these days. So I'm, I'm going to backtrack from using that term. But it's either you are with life expanding and moving forward and the thriving of, of life, or it's the containment and the, the exploitation of, and the destruction of life. These are the two very broad dynamics. And it gets a lot more subtle than that, but at the most broad level, it's about life or death. And and with death being the squashment, is that a term? The squashing of the life force. I don't want to say the word harnessing it, but it's controlling it. Okay, now not, as I said, this is very nuanced. So we could be involved in endless discussions, but I want to keep this quite broad. Once I woke up, my warrior aspect, my long dormant warrior aspect, I felt myself to be supercharged with, with energy, with passion, with purpose. Because I wasn't restricted into my human form. That I could play in other realms. I could reconstruct myself, revision myself in mythic terms. Yes, I, I am very aware of the work of Joseph Campbell, the power of myth. But these myths that I was so fond of as a child and as a young adult. And, and still, they were, 
I, I felt on par with them. I felt that I could step in to that myth-making character, that aspect within myself, and, and see one of my favourite sayings since discovering Dante is stop thinking like a human. And I, I mean that in, in a way that we consider humans to be lesser, the way we consider humans to be small fry, small players in the cosmos. We have, well, I'm Australian. Well, <laughs> I'm Australian now. But in Australia, we have what's called the cultural cringe Okay, where Australians tend to think they're not as good as, say, the, the Americans, the uh, suave Europeans, whatever. So we, we kind of, in Australia, we're very conscious of, I guess, our lack of culture, our lack of sophistication. And that's with humans as well. When we're, most humans feel worthless in cosmic terms. There's a lot of self-hate being deliberately fostered within the, the current human consciousness. And a lot of the New Age movements are, are feeding that. You know, that we are a cancer on this planet, that we, the world would be much better off if we weren't here. Yeah, well, that's... Um, that's part of this spiritual war. So what shifted me? Okay, I'm going to, to wind this up now. What shifted me from being a tired soul is knowing, really knowing, really deeply knowing that I have a purpose and this purpose is galactic. It's, well, it has galactic repercussions. That it's not fighting an uphill battle within the matrix of this planet. That we do have helpers. And this is getting back to Mary Kate's original email. No hope of support here on this earth realm. And that eternity is a long ass time to stand alone. You see, this is the real gift of Dante's teachings. We are not alone. We are not alone, but here's the challenge. Here's the, the nugget. They don't reach down to us. We reach up to them. We join them. We lift ourselves. We raise ourselves. We expand ourselves. We strive to be at their level. Now, I appreciate this has been a bit of a rambly can't even call it a conversation, but a, a bit of a rambling and musing, uh, an indulgence on my part. So I appreciate your uh, your indulgence of my indulgence. All right, well, I'm going to wind this down now. Thank you very much for listening and, as I said, for indulging me. And I hope you've found some useful bits um, in this, in this audio, in this recording. Okay, ciao and cheers. <laughs>